Okay, so I have two black plates here. Both of these are at the exact same temperature. I'll prove it here by showing you a thermal imager. So you can see that it just shows a straight blue. It means that the background, these plates, everything is at the same temperature, which right now is at 26 degrees Celsius. You can see this is working. I'll put my hand in front of it. You can see my hand. My hand is at body temperature. And I wish that you could come up and fill these blocks, but you can't, so you're just gonna have to trust me. But I can tell you that when I fill this block, it feels cold. And when I fill this block, it feels warm. So here's my question to you. They're at the exact same temperature, but what happens when we put an ice cube on them? Which ice cube will melt faster? This one at the same temperature or this one at the same temperature? Or will they melt at the same rate? Well, let's check it out. So let's see what happens when we put an ice cube on each of them. Okay, these are the exact same size. Let's see what happens. Whoa, look how fast this is melting already. This one's not even doing anything. Holy cow. This is crazy. They were at the same exact starting temperature. They're just made out of different materials. And look how much faster that ice cube is melting. That is crazy. It's almost completely melted in a matter of less than a minute. And this one hasn't even formed a drop yet. Okay, so what is going on here? How did these two blocks with the same exact starting temperature melt the ice at different rates? It's because this one is made out of aluminum and this one is made out of a very insulative plastic. So now that the ice has melted, let's check the block's temperature again. So look at this now, look at the blocks here. So you can see the one on the right, it's just a little dot right where the ice cube is. But then the one on the left has become completely blue, meaning it got, the whole block got completely cold. But this one, all of the coldness is still concentrated in the ice cube. So you can see this ice cube still hasn't melted at all. And this one's just a puddle of water over here. And this whole block is cold. And this one just feels like room temperature. So the reason this happened is because aluminum is a much better conductor of heat than plastic. And so when you place the ice cube on it, the ice cube begins to suck the heat out of the aluminum. And it can happen very fast because the aluminum can conduct the heat from all different parts of the block and, and the ice cube can suck it into it. And as the ice cube sucks in the heat, it converts it from a solid into a liquid. But for the plastic block over here, the ice can't suck the heat out of the whole plastic block because heat doesn't travel through the plastic very good. And so right where the ice block is touching is the only cold spot. The heat from the rest of the block just stays right where it is. And so that's why this ice block can just sit there and it doesn't really get converted into a liquid because it can't suck the heat out of the block. So this is the same reason why when I'm in this room now and I touch this metal, it feels cold even though it's for sure at the same temperature as the table below it, but the table doesn't feel cold, just this metal handle feels cold. Again, just to be sure, you can see everything's blue, everything's at the exact same temperature, but the handle, the table, it's all at 26.8 degrees Celsius. But when I touch it, it feels cold. And so the heat from my hand can easily get conducted into it, and the heat can travel through the whole thing, and so it just keeps sucking the heat in. Whereas when I touch the table, the table can't conduct heat, so it can't pull it out of my hand very fast. Only right where I touch it, it sucks out a little bit of heat, but then it can't keep sucking it because it can't spread throughout the wood very fast. And because your body actually doesn't sense temperature, it senses changes in temperature. And so your body says, oh, this must be cold because I'm losing a lot of heat quickly. 
And when you touch wood, it says, oh, this must be warm because I'm not losing heat at all. Okay, so with this cool experiment, you can actually see the transfer of heat through an aluminum rod. So I have here an aluminum rod with some nails attached to it with wax, and I'm gonna heat one end of it, and as I heat it, as, you, as the heat moves through it, you should see the nails start to drop off in order. And so what it means for heat to travel through something just means that the movement of electrons is traveling through something. So electrons are vibrating more and more, means there's more heat in it, which means there's more energy, which means the temperature is higher. So what's really neat about this concept is that that means that you can actually touch something that has a really high temperature and not get burned by it and not even feel like it's that hot. So for example, silicone has a very low heat conductivity, so it doesn't conduct heat very well. So watch as I heat it with a blowtorch here to over 130 degrees Celsius. So it doesn't hurt at all. I'm putting my hand on it and it just feels slightly warm. And that's because again, like I mentioned before, your body doesn't actually sense temperature, but it actually senses the rate of change of temperature because that's what's actually important. It wants to know if you're getting too much heat in a certain period of time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to my subscription box yet, go to theactionlab.com or click here, and you can do experiments similar to the ones that you're seeing me do on my channel. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.